This brings us to the next part of our map, forests. There are many different ways of adding forests to your maps. One of the quickest ways is to use the default terrain tool here. I'm just going to right click on that and you can see that there's a number of different forests that you can choose from. Let's just choose the mixed forest tool here and draw an area on our map out in the ocean. You can see that it has put in a lovely forest here. Unfortunately, that really doesn't suit the style of map. It's too close together, it's a little bit oversized, it's, it's not really what we want. So I'm going to now erase that using the erase tool here, mark all of it, right click and go do it, and then I'll refresh my map. There we go. Instead, we're going to manually place our forests using the symbol catalog. I prefer this method. It gives me a lot more control over where my trees go. It also gives me more options for what sort of trees I can use. To select the tree catalog or the vegetation catalog, move your mouse here and select the vegetation catalog icon. Here we go. We've got everything from cactuses to close crops of trees and so forth. This is what we want. I want some of these trees. Now notice something interesting here. We've got deciduous trees in a nice green color and then we've got deciduous trees in this weird sort of bluey green color and a little color spot here. That color matches this color. Watch what happens if I change the default color. I'm going to change it to red. My trees change to red. There are symbols in the catalog, many symbols in fact in the catalog that have a changeable color. We're not going to use that in this particular map, but it is good to know. Now I'm going to click on the deciduous trees and I'm going to move them in. Whoa, they're gigantic, they're ginormous. By default, Campaign Cartographer does a pretty good job of rescaling symbols specifically for your map. Now I've been messing with this a little bit, so I know that my symbols are off scale. To change the scale of any symbol that you're placing, you simply right click while you've got the symbol on the screen and then you can change the scale parameter here. And I'm going to drop this down to about 0.5. There you go. That looks like the right sort of size for the style of map. I'm going to build a bit of a forest up in here first of all. And I'm going to place some more of a forest here and in and around here. Again, if you've noticed, I'm working top, down, and left, and right. Some forest in here, and I'm going to put some forest maybe up here as well. Okay, so far the forest looks a little bit blocky. Actually, I'll put some forest down in here. I love putting forest in. There we go. You can then select individual trees to sort of map out or shape your forests according to how they would look or you would imagine them being shaped on your landscape. This individualizes your maps quite well. Bring a nice tree line around this area here. Let's put a bunch of um, tropical trees in soon. Let's go down here and we'll find the tropical trees. Ah, that's what we want. Jungle trees. Gotta love jungle trees. Perfect for what we're working with now. Put some jungle trees in here where the rivers are. And down. That might be a little bit too large for us. Let's use individual jungle trees. And as you can see, I'm placing the tree line down around where the rivers are. And a bit of a jungle along here as well. Okay, that'll do us for the moment.
This area can be a bit of a grasslands. This stream along here, not so much growth in here, maybe because of some of the fallout and toxins from the volcano, who knows. And obviously this area of the map is slightly cooler than these lower and more well-watered areas down here, probably because of the equatorial heat and winds which are blowing up. When you are designing maps, do you think about the weather patterns? Do you take into account how different rainfall zones and how different wind patterns and ocean currents will affect the vegetation and the style of your map? That little bit of thinking helps you to really build storylines into your maps as well and gives them much more character.